Superman and Lois's second season really seemed to look like it was going in a different direction with their choice of villain. With a mysterious figure clad in a containment suit digging their way out of the Schuster mines, all signs were pointing to Doomsday. But when the big bad was finally revealed, emerging from the mines in Smallville, it was none other than Bizarro. DC pulled off another switcheroo, but in this case, it was a welcome one. We've already seen our fair share of live-action Doomsday, so a fresh take on Bizarro is likely to be more promising. Since Bizarro is the main antagonist, or at very least, an anti-hero in this season, it would be worthwhile to know about his run in the comics. The origin story of Bizarro varies greatly from iteration to iteration, but the fact that he was created in a lab is largely agreed upon. Sometimes he came about when Superman was hit with a duplication ray, and sometimes it's when Superman's DNA was cloned. The point being, Bizarro was meant to be a subservient replica of Superman that could be used to take the hero down. This was a good idea in theory, but the efforts didn't exactly create a one-on-one -on -one replication. Superman and Lois seem to be basing the origin off the lab creation. It may be especially true since the United States government is working with the leftover human experiments of Morgan Edge. This could be the military's way of creating their own fail-safe against Superman. But then, they introduce the concept of the inverse world and the split. Things are going to get a little bit more complicated here. The second season of Superman and Lois introduced Bizarro into the Arrowverse. His unexplained connection to Superman also hints at the fact that he may be a multiversal doppelganger. Doppelgangers have been an integral part of the Arrowverse storytelling since the second season of The Flash, in which we were introduced to Harry Wells, who was Earth 2's counterpart to Harrison Wells. There would be multiple doppelgangers of Harrison Wells throughout the show's first seven seasons. These shenanigans came to a stop when all the realities merged into one after the Crisis of Infinite Earths crossover. Since then, doppelgangers have become much more rarer because no hero has powers to travel between universes. So where did Bizarro come from? While Bizarro is yet to be confirmed as a doppelganger, it does seem the most logical explanation for his existence. But let's step outside of the C.W. Quagmire for a second and into the light of comic books. In the comics, Bizarro is from the Bizarro world, a world in which every person is a Bizarro of their own Earth Prime counterpart. The world is in chaos, and the reverse of reality. A good reason for believing this is the diamond-shaped pendant Bizarro wears around his neck. This was a vestige of the split and can combine a being with their shadow self to achieve godlike power. This is why he is able to produce waves of energy when in the vicinity of Superman. It temporarily makes them both stronger, and more importantly, it is conclusive proof of an inverse world. Bizarro is a mirror version of Superman in most adaptations, and the one in Superman and Lois is no different. He has the strength, speed, and stamina of the Man of Steel, which makes him the perfect foe. He can deliver and endure as much as Superman. Of course, being a mirror copy does come with its changes. For one, he has ashen and zombie-like skin with glowing blue eyes. He also speaks in reverse, but is also taciturn. The Superman emblem on his chest is also a backwards S. On paper, Bizarro seems like Superman in many ways, but like his speech, his powers are also mirrored or reversed of those of Superman. For example, Bizarro has freeze vision instead of heat vision, and flame breath as opposed to freeze breath. One distinctive ability Bizarro has is his telescopic vision, which allows him to see behind his head, which makes it very difficult to sneak up on him. He wouldn't be called Bizarro if his powers weren't a bit bizarre. With everything being a mirror of each other, you can also guess by this point that the sources of their strengths and weaknesses will also follow suit. Bizarro can't step into the sunlight because the source of his strength comes from the red sun, while Earth's yellow sun only exsanguinate his powers. Kryptonite, for him, is a performance-enhancing drug as opposed to a weakness. However, X-Kryptonite has the same effect on him that green kryptonite has on Superman, which means he is not completely invulnerable. Bizarro is one of DC's strongest villains, but sometimes it's hard to deduce whether he is a villain at all or just oblivious to the true meanings of right and wrong. In many ways, he draws comparisons to Frankenstein's monster, 
which in many ways brings into question whether he is just an unfortunate byproduct of an experiment gone wrong. This is also hinted at in the show, as Bizarro will usually just retire into the Fortress of Solitude and has no desire to establish a connection with the outside world. The fifth episode in the show also made it very difficult to establish Bizarro as a real villain when his storyline was intertwined with that of Ali Alston. Also, the way his fight ended with Superman brings into question whether he is really a threat at all. Bizarro was barely able to hurt him. The Man of Steel dodged most of his attacks and retaliated with powerful blows that Bizarro didn't have an answer for. This could all point to Ali Alston being the main antagonist of the season. Where Bizarro lacks brain and brawn, he does have the pendant we talked about earlier. In episode 4, during their fight on the farm, beams of energy were shooting out of the pendant and hitting Superman. If you watch carefully, when Superman grabs a hold of Bizarro's shoulders, his hands start to go black. Bizarro continued to hold Superman, and for some reason, Superman couldn't break free until Steel got involved. It could be that the necklace was draining Superman's strength, which could prove to be an important plot device. But what does all of this have to do with Ali Alston? As far as we know, Ali is a threat to Lois, in so far as her career as a journalist is concerned. Lois wants to bring down Ali's cult and prevent it from corrupting Lucy Lane. The pendant could explain how she will become the Arrow vs. Parasite. To become Parasite, all she needs is the pendant. If she got her hands on it, she would be able to draw the power from Clark and other metahumans, giving Superman a real challenge to face. Bizarro's necklace is what binds the entire story together. I guess we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. That's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.